Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Mix Lab. My name is Kane Cherko. I'm here in Las Vegas at the Hideout Recording Studio today. And um, today in this episode, I'm going to show you about um, vocal stutters and, and how I achieve um, and how I experiment with different kinds of vocal stutters. Um, this is, you know, there, there are times where I might manually cut up and design um, my own kind of vocal chop or effect or something like that. But a, a lot of times I like to just sort of um, set my session up in a way that allows me to stumble upon ones I maybe wouldn't have even thought of or um, can't do just as simply, um, can't recreate as simply by just cutting something up. So um, there's a great plugin for that. Isotope makes it and it's called um, Stutter Edit. So what I would do is I would insert Stutter Edit as a track on one of my vocal tracks, the, the one I want to affect. Here it is here, just on its default setting. Um, lots of the time I don't even have to change any of these values. Um, but if I'm looking for more, something more specific, after I've generated a stutter, I, I might do that. So there's a lot of different presets you can download and other, other kind of variations. Um, we won't go over those. We'll just keep it basic right now for this episode. So I add that plug into the vocal track I want to affect, and then I create um, a mono MIDI track that's sent to that effect. In this case, AN lead vox. So I select that, and I will also solo bypass this track. Usually I label it something obvious like stu stutter MIDI track. Helps me know what I'm looking at and activate it. So upon playing the track, you won't hear it automatically activated, even though it's on there as a plugin. It's only activated by MIDI data that I trigger with my MIDI controller here. Now, in this particular song, in the original mix, I didn't actually use this effect, but here's a section of the song where I might consider using this effect, and we'll experiment with it for the purpose of this episode. This is the tail end of the pre-chorus for this song, and I find with long notes like this, like the singer's singing, um, and as, as well as in transitions, are really, really awesome spots to implement this effect. So I'm going to actually just loop a segment of this song a little bit before and a little bit afterwards. Um, and I'm going to put it in um, loop record mode as well, which is already set up over here. This will make sure it just keeps looping around and around, and I can try different variations on the MIDI controller. Here we go. All I'm doing to trigger these effects um, is just hitting random notes on this keyboard. I don't even know which effect I'm, I'm triggering. I'm just trying enough different um, different combinations of things to, to see what I like. I mean, you can do that by drawing it in as well. Sometimes you might use a combination of effects. Um, in, in this case, you can see I'll add it just to the tail end of this vocal line. Let's actually solo the vocal so you can hear it a little bit more. No matter what you do, an idea can die. We are not a You can really experiment with different, adding at different points in the uh, in the vocal performance itself. It doesn't necessarily need to be on the whole word. Sometimes it's great just on the tail end. Sometimes you use it in the middle of a word or at the beginning. 
Very often after I've decided upon an effect, I'll maybe go ahead and I'll print that down. Um, I may have, might even manipulate it more or add different kinds of effects um, or saturations, distortions to that effect um, and to that print. But you can see there's lots of different ways you can do this and sometimes you just stumble into some really cool random stuff that you've never thought of and I, I find the best way to do that is to just throw it in loop record mode how I did and just start randomly hitting, hitting your MIDI controller and seeing what comes up. And I think sometimes you'll be pleasantly surprised. Lots of cool options. Now, you can also use that effect um, in almost the exact same way on other elements in the track too. Um, very often, you know, we'll take a look at it right here. Very often I'll put it on my Music Master, which is where all the music tracks, separate from drums, are, um, and separate from vocals, are coming up in my song. Um, I'll just copy the same instance of stutter edit over onto that Music Master. And I'll have to reroute my stutter MIDI track to the Music Master. Oops, I got an old instance there I gotta get rid of. You can immediately hear already just with the same stutter variation I had in there, it did something kind of cool. Um, I'll put it in loop record mode just so you can see how it operates very similarly. Like, that was pretty cool. Um, I'll just play that one right back. Very cool effect. Um, Similar to the vocals, I might print that down, I might manipulate it more or, or adjust you know, the, the tail of it and, and how long it goes for and what, what, it, what else it bleeds into. But um, really just adds to the imagination and mystery of I think the, the whole production and helps take, um, helps take your track to a, a special, more interesting place. Um, anyway, thank you for joining us on this Mix Lab. I hope you enjoyed yourself and learned something about stutter edit and how to create cool glitch vocal effects um, as well as use those same sort of effects on other tracks, uh, other tracks too. Thank you.